One common topic in standardized math tests is pattern recognition. And that's a general math skill that doesn't always have to do with formulas. Oftentimes it does. But it's really more about finding patterns and seeing repetitions and um, commonalities in the mathematics. So in this one, uh, it shows you a sequence. That's a list of several numbers. And it asks you how that sequence will continue in the future. You see, we have, uh, we have four terms here. There's the first term. There's the second term, third term, and the fourth term. And it's asking us about what the seventh term is going to look like. So it's asking us to continue this pattern on a few times and get to the seventh one and tell it what it is. Well, if we're going to do that, we need to know what the pattern is. So let's talk about that. And you may be used to looking at sequences. If you've had this topic already, you know there's two main types of sequences that you cover in math uh, in high school. It's arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. Arithmetic sequences are when you add a number uh, over and over and over again. Geometric sequences are when you multiply a number over and over again. So a geometric might be where you times three each time, whereas a, an arithmetic would be adding seven, for example. Um, this particular one is tricky because it's actually a combination of the two. Part of this fraction goes geometrically and part of it goes arithmetically, uh, which is a common twist that you'll see in a test like this. So I'm going to look at the top and say, just forget, the, forget about the bottom. Pretend the bottom doesn't exist, okay? I'm only looking at the top. One, two, four, eight. What's common here? It's not something that you're adding. It's something that you're multiplying. Each step here is times two. Times two, times two, times two. I'm going to say that times two is going to continue. Okay, so that's, that's one thing we learned about the top. Now on the bottom, what's happening? I go from two to eight to 14 to 20, okay? So I think I'm adding six each time. Two plus six equals eight. Eight plus six equals 14, and 14 plus six equals 20. And that's almost all of it. I, I haven't quite got everything here because if you notice, I, I left out those negative signs, those annoying little things right there. I haven't talked about those yet. So I've almost got this thing described. Let's just talk about that negative sign, what it's going to be. Um, obviously, I'm not uh, dealing with this on the bottom by going from 2 to negative 8, right? 2 minus 10, but then plus, what would it have to be? It would be plus uh, 22 or something. So it's not going minus 10, plus 22, minus 34. That's not an arithmetic sequence. But if you look at the top and you say, maybe this is times negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, times negative 2 is positive 4, times negative 2 is negative 8. So that pattern actually works out. So let's keep on going. This was the fourth one. Uh, I need a 5, a 6, and a 7. So 8 times negative 2 is negative 16, times negative 2 is positive 32, times negative 2 is negative 64. And then 20 plus 6, 26 plus 6 is 32, plus 6 is um, 38. Okay, so I'm looking for negative 64 over 38, and there it is.